Hello viewers and welcome to our Customs Issues and Answers show. Today we'll be speaking and enlightening you on issues in relation to the Customs and Excise Department. We know that a lot of you viewers have a lot of questions in relation to Customs and Departments, so hopefully we can address that. And with me I have three of our colleagues. We have Mr. Vincent Prosper, who's a supervisor in the department, and I have two inspectors with me, Ms. Kiran Joseph and Mr. Samuel Eudoxi. And all three of them, I am pretty sure, carry a wealth of knowledge as it relates to the department. And so we'll try to touch on issues and questions that you may have. Before we get into the integrity of all of it, maybe we can start by getting some information in relation to the department, the history, and maybe Prosper, Mr. Prosper, you can help us with that. Yeah. Um, okay. The Customs Department is uh, a department that falls under the Ministry of um, Finance, Department of Finance. It is the oldest government department in St. Lucia, having been commissioned over a hundred years, over about a hundred years ago, by. Um, by Her Majesty's um, Customs and Excise um, when St. Lucia operated under the British Customs Act. And that went on until 1967 when St. Lucia was granted full government. Okay. This allowed for the enactment of the um, Customs Act of um, 1967, which governed the operations of customs until it was replaced um, in 1990 by the Customs Act of um, number 23 of 1990. Uh, the Customs Department um, um, currently has a s staff of about 250 and we are responsible for the collection of revenue okay. in St. Lucia. Right. Collection of, when you say collection of revenue, approximately what amount of revenue does the, the custom Department contribute The Customs Department is uh, responsible for the collection between 50 and 55 percent of total government revenue in St. Lucia. Okay, great. Now when we hear customs, we hear people think of clearance of goods, um, going to clear your stuff from the shed and stuff. So maybe, Mr. Eudoxy, can you tell us, maybe you can tell our viewers what steps are involved basically in the clearance of goods? Clearance of goods are, lot, are very simple. It's nothing complicated that persons cannot um, do on their own, mm -hmm. especially when it's of a non-commercial nature. So after receiving your documents from your shipper, you would move to the, if your goods have a non-commercial nature, you would move to the customs office where those goods are located, and you will go there and the officers there will start examining the goods for you, where you'll be paying your duties. When the goods are of a commercial nature, and when I say commercial nature, when the goods are for sale, and the value is above 600 EC dollars, you will now have to get what you call a customs broker to assist you in preparing the necessary documentation to clear those goods. Okay. The customs broker then would use our system, our secular system, to uh, prepare those documents for you where duties will be paid and you can get, go clear your goods immediately. Okay, so you said um, $600. To, to declare your goods. Does that include all goods, like $600? Is that the, the maximum that you can use to, or that you'll, that's benchmarked for the clearance of, of goods from the shed, 600 Claim, No. Mm -hmm. for when goods have a non-commercial nature, if the goods have a value of $2,500 or less, we allow for persons to walk into customs to have those goods examined and clear those goods on their own. But once those goods pass that value, mm -hmm. that's of a non-commercial nature, then you need to go and prepare, get a customs broker now to prepare that declaration for you. Okay. These, the $600 we spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. this is for commercial goods. So if somebody is, is, um, have some commercial activity that they're doing, but the goods are less than $600, EC dollars, they also can proceed to the customs area where an examination will be done for them and they'll be allowed to pay the duties right there and then at the customs office. Okay. So aside, apart from this, I know that at one point everything was done through paper <coughs> and now we're moving to paperless. Mm -hmm. So we hear about Asicuta, Asicuta World. Can you give us some more information 
um, in relation to Asicuta and how it operates? Where does it come in when you're clearing your goods? The Asicuta system is a system that has been around customers for quite some time, almost 15 to 20 years now. We've had, we're right now on the third version of Asicuta. Asicuta 2.0 was the first one we were using. This one, the, it wasn't fully interactive. The officers had to enter the data manually in the system in a database. And we moved from that to Asicuta++. Plus Plus. And from Asicuta++, Plus Plus, where you had this app, you had to download this app, and you got to interact with customers on that basis. Now our new system, which is fully interactive, which is our web-based, it has a web-based design, and everything is done on the internet, where the broker now does not have to come to customs to prepare any documentation. All documentation now is done at his comfort, at his place, okay. where they prepare all the documentation and submit it online to customs for customs processing. Okay, so what about payments? If I'm at home or and I do... Can I make a payment online? Is it possible to be done through Asicuta World? Payments are possible through Asicuta World. What we have, we don't have a full online payment where you could just stay and just take your credit card and pay online okay. at Customs. But Customs provides a facility, a deposit facility, where you can deposit money into an account. And from that account, at any time, anywhere, at your place, when you're doing a declaration, you can put in that payment if you have that if you have that deposit facility okay thank you um okay so you do all of that do everything online have secure the world you have your goods to clear now we come to customs and we hear okay you have to pay a certain amount of duty maybe one of you can enlighten our viewers as to how we arrive at our duties how basically how are duties calculated um from the time you order your goods and duties are cal calculated on the customs value in addition to this value there are additional costs which the buyer may incur from the country of exportation to st lucia okay. so all of this sum up the customs value there are ch local charges which are incurred in the country of importation or in st lucia those charges are not dutiable Right, but um, when calculating the duty, there are four categories of charges which are applied to the value, which gives you the custom duties. Those charges are the import duty, you have the service charge, the excise tax, and VATS. Okay. However, the tariff code is what determines what taxes are applicable to an item. Okay, all right. So. Uh, I come to claim my goods and you'll okay. have, okay. Can we can some just expand on um, mm -hmm. custom value for, for our viewers? Custom value actually refers to the price actually paid for the item. Um, and it also includes, um, like you said, the other charges incurred in um, the country of exportation. For instance, you may have packing, documentation fees, um, inland transportation charges, all these make up make up the value of the um, for custom purposes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. And um, okay, so what if I come to customs and I don't have an invoice, or I come to claim my goods and I don't have a price? How, based on what, am I charged the duties, or how do you arrive at a value? If I, if I don't have anything to present to customs? Well, there's a, what you call a valuation process. Mm -hmm. And like we spoke earlier about the um, transaction value or the custom value of an invoice, it is not always accepted. There, there are instances where that value may not be accepted for, for, for um, certain reasons. But um, when you don't have an invoice. Okay. Um, Mr. Professor, maybe you can hold that thought. Mm -hmm. um, we need to take a break right now. So okay. viewers will get back to you right after these messages. Oi, you realize you step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Gasai, boosting that money. Hold on. 
If somebody try to cross you Hola. And if my thing start to take you Hola. No Hola. need for war or violence Cause the police there to help you Hola. If a trouble start in this session Alright, no need for aggression Hola. We don't want no violence in the place Control your temper All right. Respect each other Don't let no trouble escalate Cause you know better Control your temper Respect each other Don't let no trouble escalate Cause you know better Control your temper A message from Mission Boys Studio 758 Acid Creations And the Royal St. Lucia Police Force okay. Welcome back viewers and before we took the break, we, Mr. Prosper was giving us some information on how to clear your goods when you come to customs without any value. So maybe, Mr. Prosper, you can tell our viewers or... Um, okay. Uh, many times, um, someone may come to, come to clear goods without an invoice. Perhaps it's an item that was sent by a family member or friend. Uh, and or some item that they shipped, mm -hmm. an item that they, they own and they ship and they, they don't have an invoice. What happens is that we em implore what we call a valuation process to value those goods. And there are six valuation methods, okay? But for the purpose of our viewers, um, we'll just touch on the first three, okay. which is um, the most common ones that are used. Um, in, in the event that you don't have an invoice, the basic principle for valuation, for custom valuation, is the transaction value, okay, which is the cost price actually paid a payable. So in the absence of that, the first method is to use the value of identical goods, okay, sold in the country of exportation, in the same country of exportation, and um, by the same seller. Okay. In the absence of this, then we move on to the other method, which is the, the, the value of um, similar goods. Again, it has to be sold in the country of exploitation, shipped by the same seller. Um, but those goods have to, um, they have to be um, interchangeable. They have to be similar in function to the, to the items being valued. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, we're talking about clearance of goods, but we also have, um, I know that customs, their function is border security. So what about, let's go to movement of passengers. Um, maybe one of you can tell us about passengers when you're, they're coming into the country, returning nationals, residents, what to expect, what, what are their baggage allowances? Um, maybe one of you can help us with that. Passengers, when they travel, but when you talk about the allowances, the allowances are all for residents. You must be a resident for you to enjoy the allowance. Okay, and you're entitled to 250 US dollars once a year. Okay. And we have to always remember that. That is not every time you travel, you get this allowance. This allowance is only available once a year to you when you travel. Secondly, cigarettes, cigars, about 250 um, grams. Of tobacco. of tobacco or 50 cigars or 200 cigarettes mm -hmm. either one or the other not all not three all. okay okay all right. so anything you have more than that in your package or on your person you'll be required to pay the duties on it okay. then we have 250 um, milliliters for perfumes etc so okay. this is what a traveler or a resident a returning resident is entitled to. Okay, when so they're come entitled ahead. to the 250 US when they, um, come in. when they come in. Okay. We, let me stress, let me stress okay. that it, you have to be 18 years or older, older okay. to, to enjoy that. And secondly, if you are a St. Lucia national, mm -hmm. but, but you live overseas, it doesn't apply to you. Okay, so we want to stress it's only for residents okay. and also visitors are supposed to declare all dutiable items okay. whether or not they're going to remain in St. Lucia or subsequent um, exploitation. Okay. Now um, Ms. Joseph sometimes you know you hear people come in and then they say oh they took my apples or or they seize this or they seize that maybe you can enlighten our viewers on the difference between prohibited goods and restricted goods 
And if you can give some examples of, of what these goods are. A prohibited item or prohibited good mm -hmm. is an item that is formally forbidden by law. Outright, it cannot be imported into St. Lucia. It will not be allowed. An example of this is uh, counterfeit currency, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas a restricted item is one that is under some form of control or limits. Mm -hmm. So it would be permitted, but there will be some form of control. And an example, the chainsaws, explosives. Okay. So a permit is required to import such an item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And do you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Well, yeah. our viewers might um, wonder why is it that why is it that we do this? Okay, it's it falls in one under one of our functions. Due to our strategic position on the on the border, we perform what we call um, agency functions or collaborative functions with other government departments, and. Um, when these goods are, um, are de detected, for instance, restricted goods, customs officer would, would issue a detention slip, okay. and the relevant department would either inspect it in case of agricultural goods, mm -hmm. or submit the necessary import license or permits, okay. for instance, like chainsaws. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And to add on what Mr. Prosper is saying, also, this applies also in the clearance of goods, whether it's commercial or non-commercial. Because if your goods are prohibited, then since customs is the first agency or the first point of interaction with those goods, customs now find themselves being the ones to now take possession of those goods because they're prohibited under the law. Under the law. Okay. So when you claim your goods, you need your licenses and your permits from the relevant agency before customs will allow you to take those goods and go with them. Okay. Um, but before before we close, I know, let's, let's go back to clearance of goods. I know there's this issue um, during the festive season, Christmas season, in relation to barrels and people come to customs expecting, okay, they come and, but why are you still charging me duty? It's supposed to be duty free. So maybe one of you can tell our viewers about the clearance of barrels during the Christmas season and whether duties are still applied or in what way are they applied? Well, the clearance of barrels during the, during the festive season is, is similar to, to, to that during the normal, during the normal um, period. And, um, but what happens is that during the Christmas season, government normally grants concessions to um, residents, some relief of duty and barrels, okay? okay? But it does not stipulate 100% duty free. Okay. Okay. Whereas import duty and value added tax is normally um, waived, service charge is always applicable and payable. Okay, so there's always a service charge, so it's not completely duty uh, free. To add to what Mr. Prosper said, um, during the Christmas season, there is a limit of $1,500, or $2,500, excuse me, per barrel, barrel. Okay. per family. And each family is entitled to two barrels. Okay. Okay. So also, also important to know that it does not include commercial goods okay. and electronics. So everything okay, so is personal. Commercial thing. goods, yeah, goods of a commercial nature, full duties must be paid as well as electronics. Okay. Okay, viewers, um, thank you, um, Mr. Prosper, Ms. Joseph, and Mr. Eudoxy. Viewers, we hope that you were enlightened and we were able to help you and provide some information because we know that the public, you have a lot of questions. So hopefully, in another show, we can come back on and give you some more information and, you know, just tell our viewers, let them know what customs is all about and that we can address some issues and also you can visit our website if you have any questions at www.customs.gov.lc again you can visit our website at customs.gov.lc thank you